Welcome to the Bloomberg Markets Podcast. I'm Paul Sweeney, alongside my co-host, Matt Miller. Every business day, we bring you interviews from CEOs, market pros, and Bloomberg experts, along with essential market-moving news. Find the Bloomberg Markets Podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and at Bloomberg.com slash podcast. Ten-year Treasury yield now down uh, back below 1.5% at 1.48%. That spike in yields yesterday really spooked markets and I think got some people to kind of think about valuations here, uh, think about asset allocation here. Let's get the lay of the land with Jim Bianco. He's a president and founder of Bianco Research. He's also a contributor to Bloomberg Opinion based in Chicago. Jim, thanks so much for joining us here. What do you make of the action over the past couple of days? Again, having yields shoot up here, and we saw a lot of commodities flash, maybe some inflations, uh, inflation signs. What do you make about what's going on? Uh, I think what you just said is right, is inflation signs. I've been trying to say that there is two different words that we need to keep our mind on, and that is reflation, which you hear a lot of, and inflation. And people use those words interchangeably, but they shouldn't because they're two different concepts. If interest rates are rising because of reflation, that is real growth is coming back, earnings are coming back, people are getting jobs, then Chairman Powell is right. It reflects, higher rates reflect a confidence in the economy. But if we're crossing over to that it is inflation, and that is your loss of purchasing power, your dollar in a year will buy you less than a dollar now if you own a fixed income security by the name fixed income you don't get any more dollars in a year you get the same number but it buys less you don't want to touch those securities and that's why rates could be going up and it would be very bad for the stock market so i think we're caught in this push pull is to yes we know the economy is going to come back strong this year that's not the issue the issue is how much of that's going to be inflation how much of that's going to be real growth? And with the surge in commodities, as you've mentioned, and other measures, people are getting more and more worried that we're going to see something we haven't seen in 25 years, and that is an actual inflation boom. Jim, I've been thinking about you all morning, and not just as we exchanged messages earlier today, but I've been thinking about your read on what we've seen in the bond market. You know, there's a question about whether it's just thin trading or whether it's potentially leveraged positions that are getting unwound, you know, convexity hedging, you name it, technical factor, or whether this is actually a belief in inflation that perhaps isn't being reflected in a tips market, in a, in a securities market that is distorted uh, by thin liquidity and a whole host of other issues. Can you just, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, so, so two things. Um, there is the Treasury uh, real rates market or TIP securities, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, and we look at the difference between those securities and nominal rates to get what's called the inflation break-even rate as an indicator of the future of inflation. The biggest buyer in that market is the Fed. They have bought more bonds in the last year, TIPS bonds, than have been issued, and the amount outstanding for the public is actually declining. That's how many they've bought. So my point there is they've got a giant footprint all over that market, and I've been doubting the measures that we've been getting out of that market. So that is an inflation indicator that people said, look, there's no problem there. But yeah, but it could also be because the Fed's stomping all over it. But to your other point about what's going on in the bond market, if you're not a bond geek like I am, and I'm going to put you in the bond yes, geek category too. <laughs> Paul's going to yeah, say that for me. <laughs> yeah. And, and you look at yields and you go, well, they're on their way to one and a half. And some people say they might be a two by the end of the year. I'm an equity investor. I own a business. Who cares? It's 2%. It's not a big deal. If it goes to two and a half, it's not a big deal. You know, if you're a bond investor, it matters a lot because you could wind up with, with total return losses that could be very, very big. If you've owned 30-year bonds this year, you're down 20% on the year on the 30-year bond, one of the worst first two months of a year in history. And if you're buying bonds on leverage, because you can do that through the repo market, you can leverage your positions all you want, you could have catastrophic losses if we have a 2% yield coming in the next few months. And if the bond market is in a bad place, all capital markets are in a bad place as well, too. So it's not a worry, I don't think, at this point that, you know, 2% on the 10-year Treasury is going to crush the economy with super high interest rates. More it is 2% could create havoc 
in the credit markets, and that could hurt the economy, the ability to raise money yeah. or to do the things that you're, you're comfortable with doing. That could come into question. We're not there now, but we got to stop doing this so we don't go there. All right. I'm going to annoy Paul and ask a question <laughs> that's in the weeds. But you mentioned this tips market. You mentioned this sort of inflation expectations market. And this is really key because a lot of people keep pointing to it to show that actually inflation expectations are going down over the long term, even as Treasury yields go up. This doesn't make sense uh, in a lot of ways. Are you saying that inflation expectations, as measured by the market, are highly inaccurate based on the distortions, based on the amount of that market that's been dominated, that's been hoovered up by the Federal Reserve. Yes, and I'll even back up one step further. Inflation expectations is a predictor of where inflation is going to go. We've had these markets for 20 years, have not been very good at all. They've not been a very good indicator of what actually happens in the beginning. Now you throw in the fact that the largest single buyer is the Federal Reserve in these markets, and you've seen real interest rates falling all year long. If the economy is going to boom at 5 6 or 7%, which would be, if you believe Goldman's forecast, the 7% real, that would be the fastest yearly growth in 40 years. If we had that happen this year, real rates should be rising in that kind of environment. But they're falling, or at least the tips market has been falling. Why? Because the Fed is relentlessly buying these every day. In fact, they publish every day how much they buy, and it's in the several billions every single day that they buy of this market. So I'll quote the British economist Charles Goodhart. He's a good friend of John Farrow's. When a measure, <laughs> when a measure becomes a target, it seeks being a measure. We're looking he loves that. at yes. We're looking at tips as a measure of where the market thinks inflation is. But if the Fed is targeting it by all of their buying, it's no longer a measure. So that's what my, I've been saying. I think conceptually it's right. You know, for the last few months, tips break evens have been going up. But when you want to get into the weeds and say, well, they peaked three weeks ago and this and that, be careful now because you got that big footprint of the Fed stomping all over that market and it might be giving signals that aren't the measure that you think they are. Jim Bianco, thank you so much for being with us. Jim Bianco uh, of Bianco Research. It's always wonderful having you on. Honestly, uh, I was actually really looking forward to hearing what he had to say because he always has such nuanced views pairing both the technical Paul uh, with the fundamental and really that tips market concept. I know it's in the weeds, but it's really yep. important. It is. And, and we hear a lot of strategists and a lot of fund managers talk about that tip tips market. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that, you know, kind of bringing in also the Fed buying and how that's impacting uh, the market and rates across uh, the rate curve. Yeah, honestly, fascinating discussion.